I feel really proud to be here um, before because I grew up in London before I even knew about the Navy and I semi wanted to join it and I went to my first ever Pride and I remember seeing the Navy marching in Pride and I thought I want to do that one day and I, I want to be that and that's a team I want to be a part of that's inclusive of my sexuality so that played a big part of you know me wanting to join up so then now that I've got this opportunity to stand here today in uniform and see that there's other younger generations maybe watching us in Pride and showing that we are visible and it's, it's okay to be queer in the Navy it's just um, it's a real honour it really is. So for, for me personally, uh, it's been, been really, really easy, really enjoyable, it's been celebrated. Um, I became a member of the Compass Network, which is the sexual orientation and gender identity network within the Royal Navy. I genuinely, I've, I don't feel like I've ever had to hide my sexuality in the Navy, so it's, it's been really good. And to have those support through the DNI teams and through advisors and through networks, um, it gives us a better all-round experience. Uh, this is my first Pride, so it's the first Pride and my first Pride in London. It's nice to be able to have that side and be able to actually make a change and have something so massive, be able to make that a lot more approachable, a lot nicer place to be in. Everyone's got the chance to be able to join it, be part of it, and they can do as much as they would like or how little as they can, as they much as they want, and we can all have something in common and we have to have a chat and meet up in London and have a really great time and actually learn about each other and just have a just a great time to be part of generally within the units and it's it's making that change that we're all okay and we no longer have to deal with homophobia there are some cases don't get me wrong but there are a lot less cases and the change is being there and the steps are being made which is what we want and there will become a time where it doesn't matter and we will be just who we are and everyone can actually be themselves with no consequence no problems and no issues and that is the day I'm going to be absolutely truly happy. Well, being in the RAF is something that I'm incredibly proud of and I'm incredibly proud of who I am as a person. So being able to combine the two and, and come out here and, and represent is really important to me. Um, and I think it's important to other people as well. And it's, it's just something I'm excited to be a part of. So the Royal Air Force do truly represent the LGBT community massively. We're so open to everything and anyone for any corners of the air. So it's truly representative of the Air Force, especially at Bryce Norton as well. We're just open to everybody and yeah, couldn't be any more happier. From, from day one they've been really open about um, like who I am as a person. I have some struggles wearing very feminine clothing. Um, so when I got issued my kit it was, it was a little bit uncomfortable and I was worried about if I would be forced to wear it or not. I went straight to my corporal and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll change it. And it was really good because that to me instantly was like I made the right decision joining the forces um, because they actually care about how I feel, not just who I am. Yeah, people are feeling massively inclusive now uh, with the new rank change, which is amazing. So they're happy now to be at the Air Force and to be able to identify themselves. So yeah, the new rank change was good. Today is just a wonderful celebration of everyone in the defence LGBT plus community. It's a day where pride really does mean pride for us. Um, we're proud of all our people, civilian, military and particularly our veterans today. So I think the wonderful thing about the LGBT community in defence is that they're represented at all ranks, they're represented in all uniforms and in civilian, amongst our civilians as well and our contractors. They're doing all the jobs right across defence and they're an absolute vital part of defending the nation, securing our, securing our prosperity um, and just reflecting the nation that we represent. As a gay woman early in my career, I didn't always feel safe to be out and there were certainly periods early in my career where I was in the closet. 
Um, and I remember seeing a senior gay woman um, come out in my organisation and just being really inspired by that and feeling that it created a safe space to be myself. So I think defence has come a, a genuinely come a huge way. Even in the six years I've been in defence, I've noticed a massive difference in willingness to learn, um, to an appetite to understand others, but also really genuinely seeing the value that diversity brings. And we are doing that and living that every day. And I think there will always be opportunities for us to do more. And that's really where our focus is from Secretary of State, ministers, our senior leaders, our chiefs, right the way through the organisation. How do we create that space for all our people to absolutely give their best? Yeah, so uh, historically the organisation of Pride in London has been with our colleagues in the armed forces and they've done that on rotation every year. This year was the first year that the civilian team had the privilege of taking on the organisation and management of Pride in London. For me as the chair of the LGBTQ plus network that was a real honour and privilege as a gay man myself and I'm also married to my husband uh, who's in the band Sandhurst uh, and a musician. Uh, and I'm really proud of him and everything that he does within our armed forces as well. So I joined the Ministry of Defence almost 20 years ago now. That was almost just two years after the ban was lifted on LGMB serving personnel. Uh, but coming in as a civilian in defence down in Abbey Wood in Bristol, I joined a very uh, defence and armed force centric team. And from day one, it was a very welcoming environment. I was uh, welcomed into defence with open arms. I was open and honest about my sexuality as a gay man. Uh, from joining Defence and throughout my career um, and in every job that I've held, I've been really honoured and privileged to have the support of allies around the organisation um, and that has grown and developed uh, with my involvement with the network to make sure that visibility remains key um, and I'm really proud of the work that we do in the network to make sure that we maintain that visibility across the organisation and help other people who come in and might not feel that confidence uh, to be able to bring their true selves to work. I think there's a lot that needs to still happen in defence in order to maintain inclusivity but also to make it normal. I think we need to um, make sure that everyone understands why we have inclusivity and it not to be an issue any longer. Um, it would be great to be able just to um, ensure that our personnel feel that they can be safe and secure at all times um, throughout the organisation, whatever rank they may be, whatever part of the teams they might be in. Um, but for now we've got allyship, we've got visibil visibility from across our uh, networks and I'm really pleased of the work that we do with all of that. Um, but it would be nice that you know, we get to a place and time where uh, maybe we're not needed so much. I think the easiest way to say it is pride. You know, the name of the event really points to what people will feel today as they march around. I was lucky enough to march with the army contingent about three years ago, and it was an overwhelming day. The sense of joy, the sense of celebration, the pride in marching amongst that community of people and being appreciated as well and applauded everywhere. They'll feel extraordinary pride today at what they've achieved uh, and, uh, and who they are. So the army is all about its people. All of the talent that we have doesn't just come from capability, it primarily comes from people. And so we need to be as inclusive and to draw all of the talent. And very often, the richest of talent comes from the most unexpected areas. So I want all people, especially the LGBTQ community today, to feel as if they can join the army because we need them and we really appreciate them.